Boys and girls and children of all ages, please welcome the First Lady of the United States, Michelle Obama, along with Santa and Bo. Mrs. Obama is going to read uh, a book to us at this point, but thank you again for being here. Thank you. Thank you so much. Can everybody hear me? Yes. Well, it's good to be back. Last year I came, I had two additional guests. Malia and Sasha came with me, but they're in school, so they couldn't come. But Bo got ready. He's clean, so <laughs> when we're finished, anybody who, and, he, and he's groomed. Thank you, Gabrielle. He's, he is groomed. So anybody who wants to pet him when we're done, we'll walk him around, okay? And I don't know if you remember last year, but Bo barked at Santa. <laughs> but this year, Santa and Bo have become fast friends. Absolutely. So with that, I'm going to read one story, and then I'll be able to uh, answer any questions you guys have. This is a Christmas classic. It's a favorite. I read it. Uh, or, uh, earlier this week, was it, at the lighting of the National Christmas Tree. So I'm going to read it to you guys. It's The Night Before Christmas. All right? You ready? Oh, not you, Bo. Oh, man, he was doing so well. <laughs> Come here, Bo. Bo. All right, I'm going to let him go. He's good. He's good. He'll be fine. Okay, we ready? "'Twas the night before Christmas when all through the house "'not a creature was stirring, not even a mouse. "'The stockings were hung by the chimney with care "'in hopes that St. Nicholas soon would be there." Can you guys see? Uh, okay, well, hopefully I do an equally good job. But don't tell me if I don't. The children were nestled all snug in their beds while visions of sugar plums danced in their heads. And Mama in her kerchief and I in my cap had just settled down for a long winter's nap. They're sleeping. What do you, what do you think they're waiting for? I believe that's true, but let's see. St. Nicholas, yes, they do call him that. When out on the lawn there arose such a clatter, I sprang from my bed to see what was the matter. Away to the window I flew like a flash, tore open the shutters, and threw up the sash. Bo is in the story. Is Bo? Oh, that does look like Bo. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a Bo look-alike. What do you think he heard? Why is he all in an uproar? Maybe so. The moon on the breast of the new-fallen snow gave the luster of midday to objects below, when what to my wondering eyes should appear but a miniature sleigh and eight tiny reindeer. <gasps> He's coming. He's coming. My mama read it too, and your teacher. A lot of people read this, this story. With a little old driver so lively and quick, I knew in a moment it must be St. Nick. More rapid than eagles, his coursers, they came, and he whistled and shouted and called them by name. Can you all try to say the names with me? Now Dasher, now Dancer, now Prancer and Vixen, on Comet, on Cupid, on Donder and Blitzen, to the top of the porch, to the top of the wall, now dash away, dash away, dash away all. Well, Gabrielle asked, what about Rudolph? You know, he didn't make this story. <laughs> and I think this was, and there was, Rudolph was around in another Christmas. It was that stormy Christmas where it was a blizzard. This was better weather, so they probably didn't need him. As dry leaves that before the wild hurricane fly, when they meet with an obstacle, mount to the sky. So up to the housetop, the coursers, they flew with the sleigh full of toys. And St. Nicholas, too. You gonna come to my house? <laughs> Sounds good. We got a lot of trees. And candy. Gabriel says toys and candy. 
They've got all that. They've got all that. And then in a twinkling, I heard on the roof the prancing and pawing of each little hoof as I drew in my head and was turning around. Down the chimney, St. Nicholas came with a bound. How do you think he fits in that chimney? How do you do it? Hold your breath. He, you got to get, is that you true? You have to get close to the chimney to get into the chimney. That's, That's true. very good. <laughs> he was dressed all in fur from his head to his foot, and his clothes were all tarnished with ashes and soot. A bundle of toys he had flung, flung on his back, and he looked like a peddler just opening his sack. And a grown-up saw Santa. And a grown-up saw, because only grown-ups see Santa. You do know that, right? Well, that's on Christmas Eve, but you guys see him before then. Yeah. His eyes, how they twinkled. His dimples, how merry. His cheeks were like roses. His nose, like a cherry. His droll little mouth was drawn up like a bow, and the beard of his chin was as white as the snow. How does it feel to have us talking about you in the third person? <laughs> it's all good things. That's good. It's good. The stump of a pipe he held tight in his teeth, and the smoke, it encircled his head like a wreath. He had a broad face and a little round belly that shook when he laughed like a bowl full of jelly. <laughs> he's got his list with him, so he's looking over the list. And I'm sure he's looking to see who's naughty and nice. He's at that house going, should I leave something? So where are you guys going to be on Christmas? Are you going to be on the naughty or the nice list? Nice. nice. Goodness, that's good. That's good. Because you see he's looking. He makes that call right there in the chair. He was chubby and plump, a right jolly old elf. And I laughed when I saw him in spite of myself. A wink of his eye and a twist of his head soon gave me to know I had nothing to dread. So there's no need to be afraid of Santa, right? A man coming into your house at night, Christmas Eve? Because he is our friend, absolutely. He spoke not a word, but went straight to his work and filled all the stockings, then turned with a jerk and laying his finger aside of his nose and giving a nod. Up the chimney he rose. He operates quickly. Mm -hmm. He sprang to his sleigh, to his team, gave a whistle, and away they all flew like the down of a thistle. But I heard him exclaim ere he drove out of sight. What did he say to everybody? We could do this again. Ready? One, two, three. Merry Christmas to all, and to all a good night. Yay. Not yet, not yet. Yes. All right, we'll find it. I was told that you might have a couple minutes for a couple questions. Yes. So Boys and girls, do you have some questions you, you for the first that? lady? Where's Bo? Where's Bo? Bo's around. He'll, we're going to bring him out at the end. Okay, we have a question. What is your favorite Christmas tree in the White House? Oh, that's a good question, sweetie. That's a very good question. You know, there is the, the biggest Christmas tree that's in the White House is in a room called the Blue Room. And I don't know if you guys are watching TV, but that's the tree that they bring in the day after Thanksgiving with the horse-drawn wagon, and we have to go outside and look at it and make sure it's just right. Well, that tree this year is decorated by some of the art students. So some art students decorated it, and they put ribbons on it that represent each of the states. And the theme for this year at the White House is simple gifts. That very, those states, absolutely. Those, those United States. But the theme this year is simple gifts, because what we're trying to remember is that Christmas can be celebrated with some of the most basic things. You don't need a lot of money. You don't always have to have toys and lights and glitter. You can have ribbons and hay and, and paper and 
recycled materials and you can make them look beautiful. So a lot of the ornaments are made out of fresh dried fruits and they're newspapers that are folded in really interesting ways that look beautiful and they're spray painted. A lot of things that you can do at home with, with your mom. So the big blue tree uh, is decorated by some of the students in that way. So it's my, that's my favorite tree. Yes. Why you get Why you get both for Christmas? You know, I you know, M Malia and Sasha are actually responsible for shopping for Bo. And I don't know what they're going to get him, but you know they're probably going to get him some toys because he he loses his toys. They're everywhere. They're all over the White House, in the South Lawn. I mean, the dog's a mess. <laughs> Just leaves his toys everywhere. And then he loses them and he's got nothing to play with. So we probably need to get him some more toys. All right. What do you think? Do you think we should get him anything in particular? You got any ideas? A chewy. A ball, a chewy. Okay, well, let's keep it down so he doesn't hear. <laughs> we want it to be a surprise, all right? All right. Get the, what are you going to get the present for Christmas? Oh, all right. You, look, look, the press is all like. <laughs> because I'm not going to tell you because it's going to be in the paper tomorrow, and then he's going to read it, and then it won't be a surprise. But first, I have to see whether he's been naughty or nice. I've been trying to figure that out. <laughs> what, do you, what do you think I should get the president? When you're, when you're nice. When, when only if he's nice. Let's assume he's been nice. <laughs> what do you think? Any ideas? Any president gift ideas? That's a good one. Go ahead. All right. What about a watch? A watch? OK. Well, that's a suggestion. Any other ideas? for A president bell. A president bell? <laughs> How would that work? Well, first you put it on the rooftop. A rooftop president's bell. <laughs> All right, we'll think that through. What about, what do you think I should get him? You should get him a new suit. A new suit. <laughs> Good idea. President needs a new suit. <laughs> what, what do you think I should get him? Candy. Candy. All right, let's take another question. Those are all great ideas. Yes, sweetie? What did you ask Santa for this year? You know, I didn't ask for anything in particular. You know, one of the, the biggest gifts I got this year, I was, we got it this morning. We signed an important law that helps uh, make the school lunches more healthy. Yay. Yay. <laughs> And that it was my big Christmas wish. I was talking to Santa, oh, please, Santa, please bring this. And he did, so I got my gift early. <laughs> yes, sweetie. What does your family do on Christmas Eve? We, we, what we do every year since the girls have been uh, born, except for maybe one year, we go to Hawaii, and that's where the president is from. So his family is there, and because Hawaii is so far away, we often don't, we don't only get to go there once a year. And you need a little time when you go to Hawaii because it's a long flight. But you can go to Disney. Well, well Hawaii's not in Disney. Uh, Disney's not in Hawaii, although the girls would like that, but it's on the way. It's in California, but we don't do that, and let's not talk about that because we don't want that to be an idea for the kids. <laughs> But when we go there, we, we really just spend time with family. And we, we have a lot of fun traditions and places that we like to go and go into the zoo. Even though the kids are getting older, they still like to do the same things over and over again. Going to the zoo, going to get shave ice, swimming in the ocean. And we have a lot of friends and family with us. And we go with a lot of people. So there are a lot of kids in one house and everybody's noisy and it's just fun. <laughs> yes. What? More? Yes. How many chimneys are there in the White House? Oh, which, one does this, wow. which one does Santa go in? You know, I don't know how many chimneys there are because there's, um, there's a, like, a fireplace in almost every uh, room in the White House. Um, and I think that's because it was built in a time where, you know, big older homes were heated by fireplaces. So if you were going to be warm in a room, and these rooms are big with high ceilings, you had to have a fireplace. Now, I've explained to Sasha that uh, Santa will come down the chimney 
in the yellow oval room because that's where the biggest tree in our house is. So the expectation is that Santa will use that chimney. But you never know. I mean, you know, you don't know Sometimes what you're going to do. Sometimes you got to change it up. So you won't, and you won't get burned. <laughs> we will make sure the fires are out. Yeah, put the fires out. That's a good, that's a good thing. That's a good thing. We will see to it. Thank you for that reminder. Santa appreciates it. All right, where's the mic? Where? Is it you again? <laughs> More questions? We've got hands here. Let's make sure we get the mic over there. I lost the mic. The, 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 the mic ladies. You know what? Okay, we'll get We've got them. Maybe back you there. should get Drago Bob okay, we'll get a that new idea. hot tub. <laughs> <laughs> you think he's got an old hot tub? <laughs> All right, that's another, that's another recommendation. We've got a watch, a new suit, candy, and a hot tub. <laughs> got it. Yes. Maybe you should give him uh, his own ornament. His own ornament. Well, what would it look like? What do you think? Blue. A moon, yes. What do you think we'd, we'd do with it? What, what would we put Hang on his it on own? the Christmas tree. What, would, what should it look like? Should it have colors? All blue. All blue? That's a, you know what? An idea that would be nice for you to make him an ornament and send it to the White House with your name on it. And purple, yeah. Purple or blue. And gold, too. Yes, yes. Well, that's a great idea. All right, we have a hand right here up front. Yep. Oh, wait, why, well, okay, we'll What's go there. What's your favorite thing to eat for breakfast on Christmas morning? Oh, wow, that's a good question. I, I usually eat honey nut Cheerios. <laughs> okay, we're not going to do any advertisements. <laughs> but that is a healthy yeah, breakfast, sure. it is. Some cookies. Some cookies, I don't usually eat cookies for breakfast. You know, I don't know. I, I, you know, I try to eat a light breakfast because Christmas dinner is big, right? And I want to save room for Santa. Santa, yeah, Santa probably doesn't eat, eat breakfast on Christmas because he's had all those cookies. Very full on cookies. So he probably takes it light. We have one more question. Okay. How is it living in the White House? How is it living in the White House? It's nice. It's very cool. Um, there are red carpets in the White House. There actually are some red carpets. But the most fun thing about living in the White House, and we say this all the time, it's the people's house. And we live in a house that's like a museum. There's a part of the house that's a home, and it doesn't feel like a museum. But the rest of it is open to anybody in the world who wants to come and see. And there's so much history. Uh, Barack Obama is the 44th president of the United States. That means that. 43 other families have lived there and created memories and they've created history and all that stuff is all on the walls from the furniture to the pictures to the carpets and you can learn about that when you go. So I hope that each of you guys at some point in your lives, in your young lives, you come and visit the White House. It's, it's particularly fun at Christmas because it's all decorated, there are 19 trees, but even when it's not Christmas, there's always a special place to, to visit. So hopefully all of you will ask your families to bring you to come see us at the White House. All right? What, you guys, they're very bright crew here. Those were great questions. I assume some of them are going to end up on that back podium someday. So, uh, <laughs> so Mrs. Obama, I want to thank you again for taking time out of your busy schedule oh, to be with us. My pleasure. I want to thank, thank our guys. musicians who are going to sing We Wish You a Merry Christmas in just nice. a second. Thank you again, and Merry Christmas, and God bless to you and your family. Thank you. I'll walk around with Bo. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas. And a Happy New Year. We wish you a Merry Christmas.